Hey everybody, welcome to my channel where I talk about living in Japan on the JET program, personal finance, and things like that, self-development. So, just got home from work, it was raining. Another day home from work. I feel like talking about career and personal development. Way before we begin though, I want to share my shirt and it says Neko-chan ride the matatabi, which means catnip, and it's got lightning and a cat in the clouds. <laughs> Can we just acknowledge how amazing this shirt is? <laughs> Look at him. Oh, ride the catnip, little buddy. Ride to heaven, my friend. Godspeed. So in this video, I want to talk about my experience on JET as someone who studied engineering in university. I want to talk about prospects. I have seen four people, potentially, after JET. I want to talk about some friends who studied engineering who got job opportunities. I want to talk about advice also for people who studied a technical field or engineering. So hopefully this can be helpful to some people. So for me, my story, I studied material science and engineering. I came to JET and applied to JET and also applied to engineering jobs and Basically, long story short, I got the job offer for the engineering position in Detroit, in America, and I also got accepted to JET, which turned out to be Amagazaki, which is like the D Detroit of Japan, so I was like, that's weird, <laughs> like, that's kind of weird that that happened, like, I'm just attracted to, like, the weird industrial hood area, <laughs> so obviously I chose Japan hood instead of America hood. But for me, I feel like I've learned a lot from deviating from my career path. But my dad always says there is opportunity cost for everything that you do, whether you realize it or not. It's just what's important to you. So for me, I was very afraid to leave my career, so to speak. That was the first real offer I got for my career that I had worked for at that point for like five years, six years, but I also knew deep down in my heart I'm the type of person who needs to see the world and I need to meet people, I need to be weird, and I can't just live one linear trajectory in life. I just couldn't do that. So it was a huge opportunity cost for me, I think. If I spent the five years I had on jet in a career, theoretically I'd be making more money, it'd be a lot more stable, it'd actually probably be a lot less stressful. But there's something in me that kind of craves new things and craves learning and putting myself in new situations. But I think that is something to consider as an engineer if you go into JET. Um, this is one of the more or less relevant fields that you would go into. And every year you're spending year here, you're spending away from the potential career you could have. For me, that wasn't a problem because I don't really care about career anymore much. I think it's still fairly important, but I've never really been career driven as long as I have enough money to somewhat save for retirement and live not paycheck to paycheck. That's basically all I want and have enough to travel hopefully like once a year ish. <laughs> That's all I want. But if you guys out there are more career driven or want to focus on career or to make money or to have stability. If you studied a technical field or engineering, JET would be questionable, I think. Because even for me, it was quite questionable. Um, you're spending a lot of time, effort, and money to come over here to do something that, unless we want to be an English teacher in Japan or live in Japan, is essentially just a like detour or like joyride away from what you want to do. But another one of my really good friends here said, like, essentially, in the very grand scheme of things, we're all in the same timeline, so it doesn't really matter that much. But, yeah, that was my story. I'm happy with the decision I made. There's a big cost to it, but I couldn't have spent the time better, I think. This has all been excellent. So on that, I did want to talk about job prospects for engineers here. It does seem that... Japan hires much more quickly. I knew someone who I think was applying for jobs and could get a job, technical job here within four months. Whereas when I was applying out of university in America, 
I had good grades. I had scholarships. I had international funded scholarships as well. And I still applied for jobs for a year and got one offer and from another place, one interview. So in Japan, the jobs seem a lot more, from my limited knowledge, a lot easier to get. But the work culture, just from my observations, seemed to be much more intense. So you're probably going to be working overtime if you're doing engineering. Uh, my friend sent me information about an engineering spot, and he said, expect to work about 20 hours of overtime a month. Not a week, a month, which is maybe one hour per day overtime, which I'm hoping is not underestimated, but it might be. But the jobs are here, so... If you come on jet with an engineering degree and decide maybe you want to try it out, that is a viable option. Um, however, if you come here as an engineer knowing that you want to go back, I would always have my foot out the door, basically. If you want to be very competitive with the other people that are going to be out of school, I would build skills. Um, I would maybe take online coding classes because coding... It's just useful. That's a useful skill. Uh, you could go on LinkedIn, find people in your field who are around you and try to take them out for coffee or virtual coffee. Talk to them. Network, 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 network. Like reach out to people on LinkedIn. Ask them, even if you could send $5 for a virtual coffee to talk to them to try to get more information about the company. Try to do volunteering. Try to do internships. I studied material science, so I was emailing metal manufacturing plants around where I live to see if I could volunteer there. They didn't respond, I guess, because they're like, why does this foreign chick want to come in here? We don't even speak English. But just try to be proactive. I think that is the best if you want to kind of gracefully leave JET, because the longer you stay in JET, the harder it is to leave. So I think planning doesn't hurt. My coding professor used to say prior planning prevents problems. So it doesn't hurt to try to give yourself as many options as you can and keep yourself competitive. I know some people like to take online classes. Some people do an online master's while they're here. But another friend of mine said, you know, don't do a master's unless if you know exactly why you're doing it and exactly where it's going to lead you. Don't do it just because it's a good idea. Especially if you're American because America is broken as hell. Let's not even get into that now, but the schooling system there, do you really want to pay $35,000 for a degree unless if you know exactly how much it's going to get you paid and exactly where you're going to work and exactly where you're going to do? Because for me, I still will shop at like the dollar store and if anything's over a dollar, I'm like questioning it. So if a degree is 35 grand, like that better be getting me something, man. Woo. But yeah. Anyway, <laughs> on to the next thing I wanted to talk about, which is some friends of mine. Or not friends of mine, but general advice I would just have for people who were engineers or are engineers that went into JET. Again, be proactive. Try to have a timeline for yourself coming in, knowing if you want to stay, and set checkpoints for when you want to renew that or check in on that checkpoint. For example, for me, every year... I kept saying, okay, I'm only going to stay one more year here, but I needed to kind of check in on that and say, okay, if I only have one more year, I need to do like this by September, for example, by September, I need to tweak my resume by November. I need to start applying for grad schools or scholarships or jobs or something by January. I want to have a finished resume and be applying to jobs. Just set a timeline. So it's not all chunked up at the end of jet and just again i think the most important is just using your time wisely on jet because at some points you're going to have a huge amount of time and time is a resource and it can easily slip away from you so you can combine the fact that you have a lot of time on jet with the fact that you need to be proactive or you don't need to be but it doesn't hurt to kind of split that extra time you have with maybe an enjoyable hobby you have and also something that would be considered proactive or something you could put on your resume, whether that's getting N2, being fluent in Japanese, getting coding certification or getting an Ikebana certification, anything really. So it's a lot to talk about, but 
I think it's important to talk about too. Because for me, I still don't know what I'm doing. I'm eyeballing some engineering companies around Osaka to see if they want to hire me. I'm also eyeballing going back to America, but we'll see. It's exhausting thinking about it and scary, but something will happen. I don't know what it is yet, but there's a future me that has it figured out, probably. And if not, whatever. <laughs> so, what are you thinking? What do you want to do in Japan? What do you do want to do on Jet? Set those goals and check in on them. Try to set the goals before you get to Japan and maybe check in every three to six months to see if you still want that goal, see how you're doing, and congratulate yourself for how well you're doing. So, let me know. How are you feeling about it? Are you going to keep up on engineering? Do you care about it? Are you going to drop it? Do you want to change career paths? Let me know in the comments. Until next time, we'll see you around.